Okay. Is, can I cross my arms like this? Yeah, you're fine. Does it look okay? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cynthia Cabrera. Can I look at you? You can look at me. Yeah. Okay, great. You can do that. <laughs> Makes it easier. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, you having a conversation. I'm gonna. I'll put a little. little okay. Perfect. Up saying this perfect. is Cynthia Cabrera, CSA. Yeah. Okay. So, the Lieutenant Governor of Texas, Dan Patrick, has added banning Delta-8 and Delta-9 to his interim charges. Let me explain what interim charges are. Interim charges are the things that either the House or the Senate identify as what they want to um, fix legislatively or address legislatively in the upcoming session. And, you know, it's several pages. I think we were on page 12 or something like that. Different committees get assigned different things. And we are on the State Affairs Committee. And so the Lieutenant Governor issued his interim charges and banning Delta-8 and Delta-9 is on those interim charges. This is not great. Mm -hmm. There are those people who will say, ah, there's nothing to worry about, it's fine. It's not fine. Um, this shows a level of preparedness and you know thoughtfulness to this issue that doesn't necessarily bode well for us. So what does this like committee do? What are, what, what's gonna be the result of having this? So the committee will meet um, they meet and they will come up with a report. And the report is basically their recommendation. What should we do? Should we look to ban them? Should we look to further regulate them? What, so th that's what it is. So this hearing that's happening on Wednesday, May 29th at 9 a.m., this hearing will have, uh, will, they will take public testimony, but they'll also have invited speakers. So the difference between regular testimony and an invited speaker is that an invited speaker gets five minutes. And someone who just wants to testify gets two minutes. And two minutes is a long time when you're in an awkward situation, but it's a really short amount of time when you have a lot of information to convey. So if people want to, if our customers or consumers or anyone who wants to attend the hearing and submit testimony wants to do that, I highly recommend that you write out your thoughts, make sure it's timed at two minutes, practice it through so that you can get through it. It's nerve wracking to be in front of a committee testifying. So I highly recommend that people practice before they get up there. Uh, but the committee will come up with a report about what should be done. And so we want to share our thoughts, hopefully influence the committee to do what we prefer, which is not kill our industry. So after this report is made, they deliver it to the Senate when session starts? Yes, so after the report is made or created, they will, in the legislative session, they will share it with the entire legislature and say, this is what we think needs to happen. Because remember, in Texas, it has to go, has to pass the House and it has to pass the Senate. So it has to go to both. So they have to convince both that they should ban this industry if that's the path they decide to pursue. Uh, they, the invited testimony can be people from industry. We at Hometown Hero did recommend some people. We don't know if the people we recommended as expert witnesses will be called. Could be somebody else. Um, but the way that you balance that out is by having other testimony, right? So I don't know what's going to happen, like how many invited testimony or how many invited people there will be. If you remember in 2021, um, there was, uh, they had resource witnesses, which were people that were called from uh, like dishes or a different, dishes is the department that regulates us. Um, so they could be somebody from a different agency or something like that, or it could just be, uh, you know, somebody from medical marijuana that they call to testify about why hemp products should not be allowed to be sold in the states. It right. depends, right? Do these reports hold a lot of weight with the House and the Senate? They do. Mm -hmm. They hold a lot of weight because it means that, it, think about it, this report means that a committee sat through a hearing, they took testimony, they made an informed decision, and decided to move forward with it. I mean, they could always abandon it, but if the report does come out, it's because they fully intend to pursue that, you know, that path, that course of action. Interesting. So there's a chance they could hold the hearing and then not release a report? Yeah, it's okay. possible, but not likely. Okay, so they don't know Well, what it's possible, but not probable. Right, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious if they've ever done that. Like, is there a chance that if they don't get what they want out of the hearing, they won't release a report? Correct. Interesting. Yes, okay. yes. And I think that they, I have the impression, 
just from talking to different staffers and that kind of thing, I have the impression that they don't understand how big this industry is. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the engagement. And that's why, you know, on the one hand, you want a lot of people to show up. On the other hand, you want the people that show up to be respectful and reflect the industry well. Mm -hmm. And it's tough. Um, it's easy to get passionate. It, well, it's easy to get passionate. You know, people show up in flip flops and a t shirt and cut off shorts, as is their right. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't cast a really good light on the industry. And, you know, I never want to tell anybody what to do. And I know what works when you go to meet up with, you know, legislators or, you know, elected officials, that kind of thing. You want to show some respect. You want to go and you want to look good, pull together, that kind of thing. Suit, tie, you know, well dressed that kind of thing. And you want to speak well. You don't right. want to insult anybody. You don't want to talk trash about anyone. You want to talk about how the industry has benefited you, if you have employees, how many employees you have, if you're comfortable sharing revenue. You can talk about that. You can talk about um, what the negative consequences of the uh, products being regulated in a worse way than they are now. And that's what's interesting about this. And I say this all the time. I think Texas has really good regulation because if we're talking about ensuring that there is a quality, safe consumer product for adults, you only need a handful of things in order to achieve that, right? right? Anything extra, you know, when you start like putting taxes on and, you know, all kinds of prohibitions, that's like land grab or money grabs or some kind of regulatory capture type thing, mm. which is what I'm concerned about. In Texas, there is the idea that the only thing that should exist is, because it is a conservative state, you know, Austin, not conservative, the rest of the state, pretty conservative. There's this idea that if medical marijuana program exists, we don't need anything else. And obviously nothing could be further from the truth because people do need options, right? And so the veterans community has been super supportive of us. We love them, we're supportive of them, and it's, you know, it's a two-way street and it's great. Um, but they don't advocate for just one product, right? They advocate that, ac that veterans can have access to a multitude of products, right? New and emerging products and trends and industries and that kind of thing. And it's the same for us. We have no problem with the medical program existing as long as it doesn't exist at our expense. Right. Who is the committee made up of? How is it decided? I don't know exactly how people get selected for the committee, but I can tell you that Senator Charles Perry is on the committee. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else that's of note going to be on the committee? Uh, let's see. The chair of the committee is Senator Brian Hughes. He's an attorney, so he will understand like legal arguments. Uh, one of the um, expert witnesses that we submitted, actually we submitted a couple of attorneys, mm -hmm to speak as expert witnesses, so he will understand. I can tell you who the committee members are, if you like. Uh, any friendlies, or is it mostly neutrals? Oh, is it all against? It's all, they're not all against, there's mostly neutrals. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we had a meeting with Senator Hughes's office last week, and in that meeting, they commented that they had never expected this to happen, right? That for this industry to be born, for all this innovation. And they didn't talk about uh, banning. They, they seem to be talking more about regulation. But there is the idea that these products, because nobody envisioned them at the time that the legislature uh, legalized the hemp program, that we shouldn't have them just right. because they weren't visualized. Nobody imagined them existing, and so now it's kind of like they're having to like force them into their space, like, ah, you know, we have this thing. But what's great about that, because I've heard multiple times people say, well, you know, the legislature, the Texas legislature, didn't intend to allow for these psychotropic products. And I say, well, that may be the case, but inadvertently you have helped millions of people. There are millions of people who benefit from these products. You've benefited businesses. I listened to the hearing from 2021 about this exact same issue. And Senator Perry says in there, he says, uh, because somebody talked about the economic impact of you know, how, how many people they employed and you know, the money they make and that kind of thing. And the senator said something like, well, don't talk to me about taxes. 
because the cartels pay taxes, and so you're not going to sway me with taxes. I, I, would, I would just say it this way. We don't make decisions around good taxpayers because drug cartel pay lots of taxes. Honestly, you'd be surprised at how they launder money and pay a lot of taxes. It's not a, not a good excuse to move down something that's uh, potentially harmful. So that leaves us in a peculiar predicament, right? Because normally in a lot of states, typically states that are hurting financially, this is not a state that's hurting financially, typically in states that are hurting financially, you can say, listen, you've got this burgeoning industry, it's done really well, employment, you know, it's helped with employment and that kind of thing, all you need is a tax. And typically they will take up a tax and we're good to go because it brings more money in. But that's not the case in Texas. Texas has so much money that they are not interested in the tax. Hmm. So at least they weren't last year. I'm trying to think about other things that I might want to discuss in this. So um, let's talk about the practical effect about this. Sure. So what are the different options that could happen? I mean, the Texas legislature officially goes into session in January of 2025. But when those interim charges were released, effectively, it moved the clock up like eight months, right? So as far as I'm concerned, we're in session now because they're in session now. They're having hearings, they're having meetings, right? So we have to do what we have to do now, and we can't wait until next year. The practical effect of this hearing could be that they release this report that says, yeah, we think these products should be banned. And then we have to spend the entire session and leading up to session convincing people that that is not the correct assessment. That is not what we, you know, we need to see happen. We need a different alternative. So not taking this hearing seriously is an issue. And I will say that we have a lot of people lined up against us. And when I say we, I mean the hemp industry. Mm -hmm. So there was an article recently, and it was talking about this exact same issue. And in it, Sid Miller, for those of you who don't know, Sid Miller is the commissioner of the Department of Agriculture in Texas. And so he basically regulates the farms, right? He, his oversight is the farms where all the hemp comes from. And he's quoted in the newspaper, I think the Austin Statesman or something like that, as saying that if the lieutenant governor wants to ban Delta 8 and Delta 9, it's fine and dandy with him. This is amazing and not in a good way. So number one, he's okay with killing an over $8 billion industry in Texas. Number two, apparently, He's okay with disadvantaging the same farmers that are making a living off of selling to processors who sell to manufacturers that make Delta 8 and Delta 9 products. How can you possibly be concerned about the agriculture side of the hemp equation and be okay with banning the finished good that the hemp is used for? So, I mean, listen, the idea of hemp houses and hemp streets and hemp bridges and everybody's wearing a hemp outfit, it's great. And most of that is far in the future. Like standardizing hemp houses and all that, that's a great idea and I look forward to it, but that's not today. What keeps everybody alive today in this industry are these products, our products, hemp-derived cannabinoids. Hometown Hero recently became a founding member of the Texas Hemp Business Council. And the reason that we did that was that we just saw no other choice. And it's interesting because there are other uh, associations in the state that, you know, either they focus more on agriculture or, you know, the farming side of it or something like that. But the only other alternative association that was there that was a possibility is actually very well aligned with Sid Miller. And given Sid Miller's comments and sentiments, I mean, we just could not align with them. We just couldn't do it. I mean, if, if a Department of Agriculture, if the commissioner doesn't care that the finished goods are gonna go away, we just can't be aligned with that association. Can't happen. So we also have uh, the medical marijuana um, license holders in the state working against us. We have regular marijuana people. For example, TrueLeave is registered in the state. They've got a lobbying team. And uh, I did some research and identified four or five other marijuana companies that are registered in the state in addition to metric and other companies that provide services to the marijuana industry. So it's not like we don't have, so 
it's not like we don't have a lot of things to, to concern ourselves with. I was on a call recently with uh, a bunch of hemp beverage folks and somebody from Texas, from a different association, not the Texas Hemp Business Council, said there's nothing to worry about. I think that a hearing talking about potentially banning Delta 8 and Delta 9 products is worrisome. Right. Setting the stage for 2025. Setting the stage for 2025. And I think that everyone needs to be aware and stay informed. I feel really good about our chances, but only if everybody rows in the same direction. So at this hearing, it can be anyone who has an interest in the hemp industry. And I'm sure that there will be people who are anti the hemp industry. Um, we've already had people talking uh, at the Capitol about how you know the medical program is not happy with us and we're stealing money from them and they would be profitable if it weren't for hemp products. And none of that is accurate. They would be profitable if the program were better. They would be profitable if they sold hemp products, <laughs> which I highly recommend that they do. Um, so we've got medical marijuana, we've got regular marijuana, we've got you know the lieutenant governor, we've got uh, Sid Miller, you know we've got all these folks that are not lining up on our side, and this is a this is an issue. So our industry needs to band together, and despite the fact that we really just didn't have time for another you know just founding another organization, we just decided that we had to do that because it's the only way we're going to guarantee our interests in the interest of our retail customers and our consumers and our suppliers. Cool. Um, anything else you want to add? No, I think we got the who, the what, the where. I said the where, right? Yes. <laughs> when, I did that. The why and how. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're good. Cool.